Sunday, May 26, The Sanctuary and the Law. Read Revelation 11.19, Exodus 25.16, Exodus 31.18 and Revelation 12.17. What do these verses indicate was in the Ark of the Covenant in the most holy place of the sanctuary? Revelation 11.19 Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and within his temple was seen the Ark of his Covenant. And there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, an earthquake, and a severe hailstorm. And Exodus 25.16 Then put in the Ark the tablets of the covenant law which I will give you. And Exodus 31, 18, when the Lord finished speaking to Moses on Mount Sinai, he gave him the two tablets of the covenant law, the tablets of stone inscribed by the finger of God. And Revelation 12, 17, then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of her offspring, those who keep God's commands and hold fast their testimony about Jesus. The Day of Atonement was a day of judgment. All of Israel was commanded to take part in this event by repentance, soul-searching and refraining from all work, as we see in Leviticus 23, verses 29 to 31. Those who do not deny themselves on that day must be cut off from their people. I will destroy from among their people anyone who does any work on that day. You shall do no work at all. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come, wherever you live. On this day alone, the high priest would enter the most holy place to make atonement for sin. There, in the innermost apartment of the sanctuary, was the Ark of the Covenant. Within the Ark was God's Ten Commandment Law, written on tables of stone. The golden cover of the Ark was called the Mercy Seat, where blood was sprinkled to cleanse the sanctuary from sin. God's presence was manifest in Shekinah glory above the Mercy Seat. Every sacrifice offered revealed God's mercy towards sinful human beings. But the Day of Atonement shows that sin is remembered until the Day of Judgment, as we read in Hebrews 10.3, and that it could really be removed only through faith in the blood of Christ to cleanse from sin, as we read in 1 Peter 1.18 and 19. Let's look at that one first, for you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed, from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. And Hebrews 10 verse 3, but those sacrifices are an annual reminder of sins. There, in the presence of God, mercy and justice beautifully combined. Looking into the heavenly sanctuary, the Apostle John saw, as he records in Revelation 11.19, the temple of God opened and the Ark of the Covenant revealed. The Great Controversy adds this comment on page 434. Within the Holy of Holies, in the sanctuary in heaven, the divine law is sacredly enshrined. The law that was spoken by God himself amid the thunders of Sinai and written with his own finger on the tables of stone. The law of God in the sanctuary in heaven is the great original, of which the precepts inscribed upon the tables of stone and recorded by Moses in the Pentateuch were an unerring transcript. Those who arrived at an understanding of this important point were thus led to see the sacred unchanging character of the divine law. End of quote. As the early Adventist believers studied the Bible's teachings on the sanctuary, they realized the significance of the law of God and the Sabbath in the heart of God's law. They reasoned that if the law of God was pictured in the Ark of the Covenant in the heavenly sanctuary, it certainly could not have been done away with at the cross. And so to finish today, think about the Sabbath, which at 1,000 miles an hour comes to us every week without exception. What should that tell us about the importance of the doctrine of creation? What other doctrine has such a powerful and reoccurring reminder? 
This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. And you can listen and watch at the same time on YouTube. Remember, God is always faithful.